It's the battle of generations as 58-year-old Nigel Short takes on 17-year-old Raunak Sadhwani. We have the guest of honor who makes the first move and plays his pawn up to A3. Nigel in his humorous style says, do I have to? Am I forced to make this move or can I take back? And you know, they have a nice laugh. Although Nigel says to Raunak, it's not the worst of moves that can be played, but I'll play something else. <laughs> and there we have it. It's Nigel's birthday and a very special day, 1st of June, with the white pieces. And he opens the game with one E4. E4 has been Nigel's main opening. And uh, Raunak responds back with the aggressive Sicilian. Now, Raunak is, of course, a very, very attacking player. And I think he's come with the mindset that he wants to play interesting chess. He goes knight c6. And will Nigel play the open Sicilian or will he put his bishop on b5 and go for the Rosolimo? That is a question. d4. He goes for the open Sicilian. One of the things that has happened recently for Nigel Short is that he has stopped playing very actively. His last competitive game was in October 2022. While Raunak plays so much chess, he is well um, well in touch with the game and he's very, very strong. So this is going to be tough for Nigel. We'll see how he copes with it. E6 has been played. That is the Sicilian timer now, now after Knight C3 played. You can notice how Nigel is making his moves very slowly. Raunak puts his queen on c7, the start of the Taimano variation. Now, there are many ways to play here. There's bishop e2, there's g3, there is f4. Even um, you can go a3 as a move could be a possibility. Nigel goes g3. He plays this Fianchetto system. In fact, recently... Arjun Erigaisi did play h5 against Vladislav Kovalev. But first, Raunak goes a6 to stop any knight db5 ideas. And he plays it. Bishop goes to g2. So White's plan is very simple. You castle here, bring your king to safety, develop your bishop, put, put your queen up. I mean, that's how you generally play. But Raunak is like, this is not going to be a quiet game. I'm going h5. I'm going to create play on the king side with h4. And uh, this is not going to be easy for you, Nigel. I am coming at your king. Nigel plays the move f4. And now this is not a very normal move. In fact, with h5, Raunak had already gone into some uh, weird theory because knight f6 is the main move. When he went h5, the main move is castles. But he went f4 and now we are already having very few games to follow. b5 played by Raunak and that's a very, very decent move. He wants to put his bishop on b7 and Nigel brings his bishop out to e3. One of the characteristics of this position is black's development. It's slow. Black is undeveloped yet. His kingside pieces are still on f8 and g8. But what he has got is typical queenside play of Sicilian, which is with the pawns on a6, b5, rook coming to c8 and so on. By the way, queen d3 is a nice little move uh, by Nigel, uh, sort of. Getting ready to castle long and Raunak, not interested in developing his kingside pieces, goes rook c8. And his plan revolves around knight a5, knight c4, Nigel brings in some t. Still the position is very tense and interesting. Long castle. Will White's lead in development lead to some kind of a sacrificial move here there are ideas of ndb5 in the air and then the d7 pawn could be weak finally raunak says it's time to develop my kingside knight he brings his knight out to f6 now this knight is planning to come to g4 also the e4 pawn is under pressure but short just plays his king to b1 he makes square for his bishop to drop back if needed ever and also comes out of this line of the rook and the queen there but knight a5 this is a very nice move by raunak sadhwani 
just not developing for the sake of development. He could have brought his bishop out, but no, he wants to put his knight on c4. If he wins this bishop, that is going to be pure gold because that's a very important dark squared bishop. Secondly, he's threatening the b2 pawn and also knight a3 check. There are also b4 ideas and the bishop can jump to b4. So keeping all of this into consideration, taking all of that, you will realize that White is in real trouble, not to forget that the pressure on e4 pawn has just gotten very serious. So what does Nigel Short do now? He must play carefully. A good move here. I mean, it's not so simple to figure out what is a decent move. He goes rook h f1. Now, what is the point of this move? Begs to question here. I guess rook h e1 could have been a possibility. Although, even in rook h e1 after knight c4, bg1 and bishop b4, this pin would have been nasty. But after rook h f1, Raunak goes knight c4 and he attacks this bishop on e3. We, we know that that bishop can't be given, so Nigel brings it back to g1. And now a very, very good move could be bishop b4. Because then you are threatening knight takes b2, knight a3 check and so on. But Raunak is very direct. He goes b4 and he says to Nigel, where is your knight going now? Very important for white to play his knight to a4. Because then after queen a5, you can go b3. And then knight a3, you can go king a1 and the game still goes on. But Nigel blunders. He plays knight c e2 and his main problem is that his e4 pawn now is weak. It is pinned and Raunak takes full advantage of it with knight d6. You can't push the pawn. If you push it, I take your bishop and I'm two pawns up here. I'm a pawn up and I'm clearly better. So this was a trap. Nigel has fallen into it. Remember, if you had played your knight to a4 and then he goes knight d6, you can play rook e1 to defend it. But because your knight is on e2, you can no longer even defend the pawn with the rook. So Nigel is actually losing material. He goes bishop f3, but that is a move of a man who sees no option anymore. He plays his bishop up and Raunak says, thank you very much, sir. The e4 pawn is very important. I have captured it and I am better now. Knight b3 played, brings his knight back to b3. Yes, true, there is still some technical effort left because you will see that um, black is lagging behind in development, his king is in the center. But at the same time, Raunak is not in a hurry to develop his bishop. He's going to push the knight away with a4, then maybe get his bishop out and castling would be possible. Knight d4 played. By short, he is looking at this square b5 for the knight and then the d7 pawn could be weak, knight d6 in the air. But Raunak plays his bishop to d5, another classy move by uh, the youngster. And Nigel goes rook e1, putting pressure here on e4 and threatening bishop f3, knight f3, uh, sorry, bishop e4, knight e4 and sacrificing there. But Raunak goes a4 and now knight jumps to b5. Wow, this is getting seriously very tricky. You can't pick the knight because your queen is hanging. You need to move the queen. But to which square should you move to? There's also a threat of the bishop on for Raunak goes queen b7. And he says, now my knight on e4 is reinforced. So you are no longer winning that knight. And I'm threatening your knight on b3. So Nigel puts his knight on a5. <laughs> he attacks the queen. Well, this is exactly what Nigel Short would have wanted. Because even though he's clearly worse, he is muddying the waters beyond measure. Queen a8 played. Now the knight on a5 is almost trapped. But the bishop comes in. Now the bishop not only defends the knight, but also threatens knight c7 check. Oh my goodness. This is getting intense. What is Raunak going to do? How is he going to prevent knight c7 check? He says, I'm not preventing at all. Bishop e7, if you want to come in, come in. Be my guest. I'll take it here. And then I'll play my knight to c5, attacking your queen and this bishop. And you are losing material. So that is again brilliant calculation. And for that, Nigel says, I'm taking on e4 and I'm attacking now. If you take back here, my bishop would no longer be hanging on f3 in that line. And I'll play knight c7. But Raunak takes it with the bishop. Now in comes a check. 
That's an important check. Who? He takes it. And do you take with the queen? Yes, he does. He takes with the queen. And now, well, black can take on c2. He can take with the bishop. He can also take with the rook. He takes with the bishop. King a1. Is this position getting complex or is it quite okay? Bishop d1. He wins an exchange. If you look at the material, black is an exchange up. Black is two pawns up as well. So a lot of material. But... He can't castle. His king is still in the center. And there could be problems with bishop c5. Threatening a mate on e7. So it's still not so simple here. What is Raunak doing? Oh, he moves his queen to t5. What a move. What a move. The point is, if you take with the rook, there is a back rank mate threatened. Oh my god. What a brilliant simplifying move. And with this, the attack comes to a standstill. And what a sport Nigel is. He's such a wonderful sport. He allows Raunak to checkmate him on the back rank. That was very, very nice. And Raunak Sadwani wins the first game, gets three points and a very clean victory against the legendary opponent. Nigel Short, definitely out of sorts in this game, needs to get back in his own for the match. Still three more classical games to go.